Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wildcard Wednesday. My name is Ben Pulowski. I will be your presenter for today. Uh, thank you very much for joining us as we take a look at what's new in GeoTab Drive and introducing Cloud ELD. So taking a look at some of the more recent and upcoming changes to the GeoTab Drive app for hours of service and ELD compliance. Uh, if you have attended either of our Tuesday talks this month on uh, GeoTab Drive and Cloud ELD, just to warn you, this is pretty much just going to be a recap of those. So if you uh, have already attended one of those, uh, no surprises up front. If you'd like to sit through it again, well, of course, you're more than welcome to. So let's jump in. Here is our agenda for today's webinar. So just start with a little bit of background and, and a few of the basics. What is an ELD? What does that mean? And who needs to use it? Uh, look at some current updates to both GeoTab Drive and on the UI side. So different uh, changes in the database to help monitor the duty status logs and reporting. We have some enhancements, some features, custom reports that just became live in the GeoTab marketplace uh, within the past two weeks, and then show you briefly the compliance and implementation guide. So what is an ELD? An ELD is an electronic logging device. And an ELD is a device that will be attached to a commercial motor vehicle to synchronize with the engine and record hours of service. So this is getting into cloud ELD just a little bit. The previous GeoTab drive wasn't as geared towards synchronizing with the engine. Moving toward ELD compliance, now we are, and we'll get into that a little bit deeper in uh, later in the webinar. The ELD will facilitate considerably more accurate recording of all driver activity by providing snapshots throughout the driver's day. Who needs to use it? Drivers who currently maintain paper rods, which is record of duty status, for eight days or more during any 30-day period must have an ELD. There are some limited exceptions to the ELD mandate. Uh, Drive-away, tow-away operations are not required to use an ELD, provided that the vehicle driven is part of the shipment. Not required on a commercial motor vehicle older than uh, the year 2000. And again, if you use paper rods for not more than eight days, then you are uh, accepted from the ELD mandate. The rest of us, though, are required to comply, and that date is coming up in December of this year. So if you are still using paper logs, you only have about seven months left, a little bit less than seven months to move into uh, an electronic logging system. So here are some of the uh, GeoTab Drive and UI updates we're going to go over. We'll start here with duty status changes. Uh, this ties into uh, pulling that uh, engine data, synchronizing with the engine data that I mentioned a moment ago. A drive log will be generated when the vehicle goes above 5 miles per hour. Previously, that was 12 miles an hour. It is now 5 miles per hour. Uh, an on-duty log will be generated when the vehicle does not move for five minutes. And it will backdate the log time to when the vehicle first stopped. So I'm driving, I stop my vehicle at one o'clock. I put it in park, my vehicle is idling, I'm doing paperwork in the cab. At 1.05, even though the ignition is still running, I haven't moved for five minutes. So at 1.05, it's gonna take me from the drive line and it's gonna change me to on duty instead but it's going to backdate that time to when I actually stopped, which was one o'clock. This is going to happen automatically because that's coming from the actual ECM. That's coming from the computer in the vehicle. So before, uh, drivers had the option to go from on duty to drive or drive to on duty, and that's not recommended anymore. That can actually, um, cause some problems and it can cause some complications because these different record of duty statuses are now coming straight from the vehicle's ECM. Once the vehicle's computer says, hey, we're going five miles an hour, it's going to generate an, uh, a, a, the, uh, a drive status. Because those duty status logs are coming directly from the ECM now, drivers will need to make use of yard moves or personal conveyances, otherwise a drive log will be generated. It'll put them on the drive line. So before, if you wanted to uh, move the vehicle in the yard, you could really just 
stay under 12 miles an hour and you'd be okay. It would just keep you on duty. It wouldn't put you into drive. That's not the case anymore. As soon as you hit five, it's going to put you into drive. So you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of yard moves and personal conveyances. Uh, to set that up from the admin side, it's done by users. So if you go into the user and you edit their hours of service settings, yard move allowed and personal conveyance allowed, you want to make sure that those are turned on. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of drive logs that are popping up. Previously, you would be able to go in and edit those or even remove those drive logs if you knew that they were just moving it in the yard. But pretty soon, you're not even going to be able to do that anymore. From the driver side, you can apply a yard move or personal use under the options when you are logged into the app. So strongly recommended, get your drivers into the habit of using these. You're not going to be able to just make drive logs disappear anymore because it's coming from the engine now. So again, recommend it, get in this habit. So upcoming to duty status changes, automatic origin drive logs cannot be removed or edited to another status. It's now coming from the ECM. If they go above five miles an hour, they don't have a yard move or personal conveyance, they're going on the drive line. You will not be able to edit that. You will not be able to remove that. Uh, you will not be able to remove any duty status log. Example, the driver goes into a sleeper berth status accidentally, won't be able to remove that anymore. Logs can only be edited. And again, if that is a drive log, it can't even be edited, or it will not be able to once this change is implemented. Unassigned driving time. So unassigned logs will be generated any time the vehicle is driven without a driver logged in. When the driver logs into the GeoTab Drive app, they will be prompted to claim logs for their vehicle. So pretty much every single log either needs to be claimed by someone or you have to notate why it's not being claimed. You can view unassigned logs in the database by looking at HOS logs for whatever time period and selecting unidentified driver. That's going to tell you all of the logs that are as of yet unclaimed. It's also going to show you in the logs themselves. You have right there, driver is unidentified. Uh, the carrier is ultimately responsible for unassigned logs. So as I just mentioned, carriers must either assign these logs to the driver who drove the vehicle, or they leave those logs unassigned, and they have to annotate the record, the log, explaining why it's being left unassigned, one or the other. It has to be one of those. Vehicle settings. So each vehicle now has a setting under more details for hours of service. And you have on, automatic, and off. So by default, it's going to be set to automatic. It's going to stay on automatic until someone logs into the GeoTab Drive app and selects that vehicle. Once that happens, this hours of service setting is going to change from automatic to on and it's going to stay on and it's going to continue to generate logs for that vehicle. If you have hours of service set to off, it will not generate logs for that vehicle. But again, it's automatic by default. Once it detects someone selecting the vehicle through GeoTab Drive, it's going to change to on. Drivers are currently prompted to verify logs when they are logging out of the app, when they are verifying their logs at the end of the day. The new workflow is also going to prompt drivers to verify any unverified logs when they first log into the app. So that is a new change. Uh, any annotations that are applied, there is now a character limit. Annotations must now be between four characters and 60 characters. Uh, carrier edits, this is going to be part of the June release. So previously, when uh, edits were made to any hours of service logs, the driver would have to re-verify them. They would have to re-verify the logs, or they could just, in theory, not re-verify them, but they would still sort of hang there. The change that's happening now is that once logs are edited, the driver can approve those changes or the driver can reject these changes. So that reject is really the new feature here. This is ultimately done to protect the driver. 
drivers are responsible for their own logs. This is in place to protect themselves. So we're getting into some enhancements now for uh, GeoTab Drive and the UI. The biggest one is Cloud ELD. So this is different from how GeoTab Drive has operated in the past, where before the duty status logs were being generated by the GPS in the tablet. That's no longer the case. The duty status logs moving from on to drive and drive to on is now coming from the ECM and the Go device itself. So we're tying into that engine data as opposed to just relying on the GPS in the tablet. So the way that it works is that the GeoTab Go device sends engine data and location data to my GeoTab, to the server. The Drive app sends the duty status of the driver to my GeoTab, to the server. And what we're doing is we're combining the data from both those two different sources, from the Drive app and from the Go device, which is plugged into the diagnostic port, and we're reconciling them to create the most accurate record of duty status possible. My GeoTab then sends the updated information back to the Drive app. Uh, something else worth pointing out here is that previously that IOX USB cable was required. The tablet needed a power source in order to properly function, and not having it on a power source uh, could cause some problems. That's no longer the case, so that's another benefit of this cloud ELD, where now that USB cable to power the tablet is now optional. Now you're going to want to keep the tablet powered on, but it's not as critical as it once was. Uh, another enhancement, hyperlinks within database reports, specifically any HOS violations, or the HOS violations report, and the HOS availability report. So those now have a link within the database to take you directly to the logs to see any violations or to see their availability. Logs are now in the driver's home time zone. So depending on uh, where you are located, it's still going to show in the driver's time zone. So that is a new change. That is something to be aware of. Previously used vehicle. So before it would uh, automatically prompt you to select the last vehicle that you used. Now it's only going to select the last vehicle you used if you are within the immediate vicinity. Otherwise, it's just going to take you to your normal vehicle list uh, from which you can choose the vehicle or punch it in and search for it. So if another driver selects the vehicle you currently have assigned, you will get a pop-up that you have been unassigned, and you will be forced to select a vehicle again. So just sort of giving you a heads up, giving you a warning there that another driver has selected your vehicle, and it will prompt you to select a new one. Some new features, one is translation support for GeoTab Drive. So GeoTab Drive is now functional in English, French, Spanish, German, Brazilian, Portuguese, Japanese, and Polish. Log into GeoTab Drive without a vehicle. So this is sort of tied into what I just mentioned about uh, it basically letting you know if someone else has chosen the vehicle you're currently assigned to. You now have the ability to go into an on-duty status without selecting a vehicle. So maybe you are doing uh, office work, maybe there is not a vehicle available, maybe you need to free up a vehicle for someone. But you can now go into an on-duty status without occupying a vehicle. You can just use no vehicle from uh, that list down there. There is the option to enter in a personal conveyance threshold. So that is within your system settings within the database. Whatever distance that you entered there, uh, the system will change status from personal conveyance to drive once that distance has been reached. Uh, the default, I believe, is 47 miles or 75 kilometers, but you can adjust that yourself. This is just to make sure that the logs are as truthful and are as accurate as possible. And again, uh, this is largely to protect the drivers so that when they are driving, they are not overworking themselves and they're essentially getting, I guess, credit for driving is the long way to say it. But we just want to make sure that the logs are as accurate as they can be. We have a few 
custom reports that I want to show you here. There are about a dozen or so custom reports that have been added into the Geotab marketplace within the past two weeks, geotab.com slash marketplace, and there's links here in this presentation that I'm going to give you. One is the HOS Driver Violations Alert ELD report. So this is an emailed report. It's going to send out an alert in 30 minutes every time a driver is in violation of their hours of service limits. So uh, this will monitor if they have exceeded their time before taking a rest period, exceeded their driving time for a day, exceeded their daily work limit, exceeded their cycle limit, anything like that. Uh, so it will send you an email alert every 30 minutes. Uh, Off-duty to drive is another custom report. So the logic here is that you shouldn't see too many instances of off-duty to drive because they should be doing their inspection. They should be doing their DVIR report. So this is going to highlight instances when a driver goes immediately from off onto the drive line. They didn't go on duty and do their vehicle inspection. Uh, hours gained ELD report is if you have any drivers who are on the 60-hour 7-day or 70-hour 8-day rule sets. So these rule sets are on a rolling 7 days. What this is going to do is it's going to look at the time that was taken up on the first of those 7 days, so the day that's about to fall off. And that's going to be the time that's available for the next day. So again, it's only for those two uh, rule sets, 60 hour, seven day, or 70 hour, eight day. Uh, excessive personal conveyance uh, allows the carrier to specify. So as I mentioned, you can set in that personal conveyance max threshold. And this is just a way to keep an eye on how much personal conveyance is coming from your drivers and from your vehicles when maybe they should be on the drive line instead. The last thing that I want to show you here today is the Compliance and Implementation Guide. Uh, so there are a lot of people in our HOS team who have spent many hours putting together this beginning to end, extremely thorough guide on everything there is to know about hours of service. This is your GeoTab Drive Bible right here. Background, pre-deployment steps, uh, deployment processes, ongoing supervision, troubleshooting, driver guides, admin guides, videos, add-ins, reports, you need it, we got it. And I'll actually um, just take a minute here to briefly show you this guide. There's a link right here in the presentation that I'm going to send you. This is a really massive document and it goes through, again, pretty much everything that there is to know about Geotab Drive. So if you have any questions, this is a wonderful resource. This is a great place to start. That's going to conclude the formal presentation today. As I've mentioned, we have a lot of really good questions coming through here. We will continue to answer those. So if you do have uh, any questions, please feel free to type those in, and uh, we will answer any questions that you have. For the rest of you, thank you for attending. We appreciate it very much. Be sure to check out geotab.com slash blog. We're always adding new content. Uh, so once again, thank you for attending. Have a great day.